Okay, this video is going to cover mid-level rationals. Um, I guess if I had to choose, mid-level would be probably my favorite. I put coefficient here because this is how you're going to find your HAs, your horizontal asymptotes. So let's go ahead and get started. What I mean by coefficient is you have to look at your rational and you have to look at the lead coefficient once it's factored fully. Now, whatever the top divided by the bottom is, is your horizontal asymptote. So this one would be 1 over 1, which is just 1. Look at this one right here. You have 2 over 1, which means this horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 2. This one, they're trying to trick you. You have to rewrite this problem as negative x plus 3 over x plus 4. You want the coefficient of the x's, not just the first numbers you see. So this one would be negative 1 over 1. So the horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 1. This last one, lead coefficient of the top is 1. Coefficient of the bottom is negative 1. So my horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 1. All right, so that's the main difference. Everything else is kind of similar to bottom heavy, um, but let's just go ahead and work it one at a time. I'm on this problem right here. Vertical asymptote you get from your denominator, setting each factor, factor equal to zero. However, you need to look for holes. See how x minus two is the same on top and bottom? That means I'm gonna have a hole at an coordinate where the x value is 2. I don't know the y value yet. Don't assume that it's 0. That's one of the most common mistakes. To solve for that y value, you're going to plug in 2 into your equation after you've canceled. So it's going to look like this. y equals plug in 2. So you have 2 plus 2 on top and 2 plus 4 on bottom. It's uh, 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. So that's the y value of this hole. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the graph. 2, 2 thirds is like here. There's a hole there. Okay. Now, back to vertical asymptotes. The one that didn't cancel is this x plus 4. Set it equal to 0 and solve. You get negative 4. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4 right here. Go ahead and put your horizontal asymptote down at y equals 1. Okay. X-intercepts you get from the top. Whatever didn't cancel, um, set that equal to 0. So like x plus 2 equals 0 and solve it. You get negative 2. So my x-intercept, I only have 1, and it's at negative 2. So it's here. The y-intercept you get from plugging in 0 into your equation. If you plug in 0, which, by the way, you can plug it into the original, the whole thing, or after you've canceled the whole, it won't matter. So plug in 0 here. You get 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So I have a y-intercept at 1 half right here. Okay, the last thing to consider before I start graphing this is this vertical asymptote at negative 4 had degree 1, which means whatever I end up with, my arrows have to be opposite directions. They cannot be going the same way. Okay, we're, we have all the information we need to graph this line. Basically, you have to hit these three points here, and you're not going to cross this uh, horizontal asymptote. So it's going to look like this. Now, since this arrow is going down, that means on the other side of that vertical asymptote, that arrow is going to be going up. And you're not going to cross this right here, so you're just going to go level out like that. That would be my answer for this problem. Okay, moving right along. I'm going to go to this one next. I would start out by looking for vertical asymptotes slash holes. Nothing cancels here. 
Um, so get your vertical asymptotes from the denominator, setting those factors equal to zero, you would get x equals two and x equals negative two. So go ahead and draw your vertical asymptotes. Now your horizontal asymptote you can put on the graph as well. That was at y equals two. All right, now if you look at this, it has one, two, three sections of line divided by that, those vertical asymptotes. So I'm gonna need three sections of line when I do this, keep that in mind. Now I would go find x-intercepts by looking at the top factors and setting those equal to zero. So I got three and negative three. So I'm gonna hit right here and right, sorry, that one's wrong, um, right here. Three and negative three, okay. Now my y-intercept, plug in zero for all these x's. So you're gonna get, I'm gonna write this one out so I don't mess this up. Be really accurate when you do your y-intercept because if you get like your y-intercept down here and it should have been up here, your whole graph is gonna be backwards. So here we go, two, zero plus three is three, zero minus three is negative three, over. Um, zero plus two is two times, negative two. So the top becomes um, negative 18 over bottom is negative four. So that's nine halves. So I know I have a y-intercept equal to nine halves. That's four and a half. So that's like here. Okay. So now I think I'm ready to go ahead and start graphing this. The last thing that I need to be considering when I'm doing this is the vertical asymptote degrees. They're both one. So all these arrows are gonna have to be oppos. They're opposite directions. So here we go. I would probably start with, uh, it, this one's pretty easy. I mean, you could start wherever. I, I'd probably start in the middle. You're not gonna cross this. You're not gonna cross that horizontal asymptote. So this part's just gonna be like a U shape. Now, if this arrow's up here, well, that means this arrow's got to be down here, like so. Level off at your horizontal asymptote. Same thing on this side. If that arrow's there, that means on the other side of the vert vertical asymptote, it's got to be there. Level off at your horizontal asymptote. And that's what this graph would look like. You definitely could have started at like this point right here and just been like, okay, well, I know I'm not gonna cross that vertical asymptote and I know I'm gonna level off at my horizontal asymptote. Then you could have been like, okay, this arrow, this arrow, et cetera. It doesn't really matter where you start on that problem. Okay, let's move right along. Just cleaning it up a little bit. Here we go. Now the third one here is the one that they tried to trick you on on your horizontal asymptote. You had to rewrite it. Generally, you're going to write the letter X first anyways, so keep that in mind. Now, this one, go get your vertical asymptote. Set the denominator equal to zero and solve it. You would get X equals negative four. So I've got a vertical asymptote here at negative four. I've got a horizontal asymptote at negative one. So those are kind of like my boundaries. Now the X intercept, if you plug in, um, I mean, if you look at the top here, you could take either one of these and set them equal to zero and solve. You would get three. So I'm gonna have an x-intercept right here. Uh, let me stick to blue. Okay, now y-intercept, you plug in zero for x. If you did that, you would get three-fourths. So I have a y-intercept equal to three-fourths, which is here. Now, the last thing to consider is the degree of your vertical asymptote. The bottom has degree one. So that means on the either side of this vertical asymptote, they're gonna be oppos. So here we go. I think I have all the information I need to graph this line. Basically hit these points and level off at your horizontal. Then go up to your vertical and go level off there vertically. Now, since this arrow is up here, that means on the other side, the arrow's got to be down here. And level off at your horizontal asymptote. So that's what that one would look like. 
Now this last problem is kind of interesting because you're going to go to get your vertical asymptotes here. And so you're looking at all these things on the bottom. You need to realize that X is going to cancel. So you're going to have a hole with the X value of zero and X plus one is going to cancel. So you're going to have another hole at an X value of negative one. I'm getting negative one because I'm taking X plus one and setting it equal to zero and solving. That's how I'm getting this X value there. So there's two holes on this graph. To find out the Y value, you need to plug in zero and plug in negative one into whatever remains, okay? So it'd look like this. Y equals, I'll write both of them out. That way there's no confusion. So that's negative two over one, which is negative two. So zero, negative two is a hole right there. Now the next one, uh, plug in negative one. I'm here, plug in negative one into this equation again after you've canceled. So it looked like this. Top becomes negative three, the bottom becomes um, positive two. So negative three halves. is my whole, so negative one, negative 1 1.5 is here. So there's gonna be two holes right next to each other. It is important to realize that because if you called those vertical asymptotes, you're gonna have a nightmare trying to do this problem. Go get your vertical asymptote though. It's the one that didn't cancel, so it equals zero. You get X equals one. So there's a VA, a vertical asymptote right here. Your horizontal asymptotes at y equals negative one. Okay, go get your x-intercepts and your y-intercepts. You have to do this after you cancel. So your x-intercept is this factor set equal to zero and solve. That's at two. That's here. All right, now in terms of the y-intercept of this, you would plug in zero for x and go solve it. So it'd look like this. But if you remember from earlier, we've already done this. There's a hole there where your y-intercept should be. So this one, there's not gonna be a y-intercept. Okay, now the last thing to consider is the degree of your vertical asymptote, which is one. So that means these arrows have to be oppo. So let's go ahead and graph this one. It would look something like this. I'd probably start with this dot right here because I know I'm gonna have to hit and cut through it since it was degree one. So like if that had said degree two, then I would have had to bounce off somehow, um, but it doesn't, it's just degree one. Now this other section of line, it's gonna look like this. And that's all there is to it. So this covered mid-level rationals coefficient. Remember, you get your horizontal asymptote by the coefficients, like one over one, two over one. Those are your horizontal asymptotes. Everything else is basically the same as the um, bottom, bottom heavy. So hope this video helped.